What's up, everybody? My name's Adam Glick. Follow me on my cooking adventures outdoors over a campfire. Join me on the ultimate Kentucky experience, connecting with locals and eating my way around the bluegrass state. We're here at Shaker Village, Pleasant Hill, Kentucky, America's largest restored shaker community. So this garden I'm sitting in right here is over 200 years old. It provides the local restaurant, the trustees table, with all of its vegetables. Now that's about as farm to table as it gets. So I'm meeting up with Eric Porter, professional mountain biker, and he's born and raised local right here in Kentucky. Whoa, what's going How's on, Eric? Good to see ya. Yeah, good to see you as well. Yeah. Check it out, I got some fresh vegetables for lunch. Oh, perfect, I'm starving. You like a good salad? I love a good salad. Perfect. I like a good mountain bike. Nice, we should do that too. <laughs> <laughs> this place is awesome. I remember coming here as a kid. It really helps preserve the shaker culture. With Very cool. So what do you do now? So I ride bikes full time. Uh, I get to travel the world on my mountain bike and explore. It's pretty amazing. Hey, you travel with a bike and I travel with knives. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool, man. You know, we have an organic garden in the backyard and everything too, so I'm super pumped to see what we do with the uh, so you enjoy so, fresh vegetables then? I do, and you know how it is with traveling. Sometimes it's hard to find something fresh. And Absolutely. So let's make ourselves a little Greek salad, okay? Got some beautiful fresh vegetables here. Use a variety of colors in your salads, and your guests will thank you. The beauty of an heirloom tomato is they're not filled with juice. They're filled with meat, usable, edible meat. Let's cut it long ways, okay? Turn it 90 degrees and do it again. So this is what's known as a painted serpent cucumber. Never heard of that. Pretty cool looking, right? Absolutely. Again, these are some of those heirloom varieties that, as far as we're concerned, are gone. Right. But they still exist. You just gotta be in the proper farm. That's awesome. Yep. Let's go ahead and run our knife through this guy. Or do you have any knife skills? Uh, a little bit. Okay, well here, let's try this out real quick. I want you to turn this vegetable here about 45 to, yep, there okay, it is. Like that. And that's gonna create a bias right there. Perfect, you're using the tip of your knife and creating these nice bias cut chunks right there, about a half an inch thick. I like your knife skills. Next, let's do the bell pepper. I love these big natural rings that you get in a bell pepper. Oh, that is right? cool. This is a lemon cucumber? Yeah. Pretty cool looking vegetable, right? Yeah, I love those things. We grow them in our garden at home. It's got a little hint of lemon. It's definitely a different flavor. A little more brightness. So when you're making a composed salad like this, you want different shapes and sizes. So next, let's make a wedge. Do anything you can to vary your shapes. You want variety. Let's plate them accordingly. It's like painting, but on a plate. When we're plating a composed salad like this, it's all about symmetry. And what we're gonna do is continue this building process with all of our ingredients. This is a purple Thai basil right here. It's in no way traditional or Greek, but I think it's gonna add a beautiful flavor. Oh, basil's perfect and for this salad. Look at that. All that's left to do now, sprinkle some feta cheese, olive oil, and red wine vinegar. So that stuff always goes on last. Absolutely. Mediterranean in, in the heart of Kentucky, right here. I love it. So check that out. Right out of the garden, too. I mean, we're standing next to where we got this food from. Mm. What do you say we uh, wrap this up and go for a quick bike ride? Yeah, let's do it. So this is Crazy Reds. This is a uh, black run. So we'll just, I'm gonna throw you right into the deep end. Straight off the black diamond. <laughs> So we got a wall ride for the first big feature. You hit one of those before? No. All right, so what you're gonna wanna do is set it to ramming speed and hope for the best. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that I know how to do. Nice. <laughs> so it's uh, basically centrifugal force. If you're at the right speed, then it'll just hold you right to the wall ride and then you either turn down at the bottom or this one actually has a landing that you can kind of jump out to uh, if you're comfortable, Perfect. but it's really not too bad. So after that, it's gonna get in some rollers and tables, and uh, these, with the full suspension bikes, you're gonna wanna preload going into kinda the lift. press in. Yeah, kinda press down out. at the bottom, yep. and then let it just, like when you bunny hop, you go front end, then back end. When you know you're over it and it looks good, then you can push the nose down a little bit. How do you gauge your speed prior to getting to a tabletop? Uh, follow the guy in front of you. <laughs> so I'll let you go first. Yeah. Oh, 
That was awesome. That was too much fun. That's honestly some of the most fun I've ever had. Man, that's that wasn't here when I grew up. We didn't have anything like that. It's so cool to have these flow trails here now where people can not just ride the technical trails, we get these berms and jumps and really opens it up to a whole new group of people. That's killer. I think I'm ready for some protein refill now. I was thinking maybe we could make a little bacon, bluegrass, blue cheese, bourbon burger. Right. A tongue twister and a, a tongue twister and a taste twister. <laughs> exactly. All right, let's go do it. Nice, I like it. All right, so check this out. We, what we have here is some nice, full fat beef. I don't like using lean beef. I like stuff that tastes good. Let's spread it out so that we have more surface area to work with, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and start by mixing in some Worcestershire. I'm on it. I'm gonna crumble in some blue cheese. You go for it, we can't mess this up. No one ever said there's too much Worcestershire in there. Oh, that stuff is awesome. And we want enough cheese here to be able to have a bite in every bite. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's more than I would have guessed. Let's add some salt and pepper. Your forearm should hurt by the time you're done. Oh, I've been riding all day. I'm used to it. <laughs> so I'll slice up the chives here. Okay. You take the fresh thyme. Yep. Here, help me out. Let's go double time. <laughs> double time in it right now. <laughs> hey, I'm a dad. I get I got license to say dad jokes. <laughs> I'm gonna take about half of those chives, reserving the other half for our spread. Right. All we have to do now is make the patties themselves. And I don't want to overmix this. Actually, meat, in this case, works very similarly to dough. So you can overwork meat and make it tough. Interesting, I had yeah. no idea. So I'm gonna reach underneath and fold in. And now I know every single ingredient is right in the center. Yeah. Now I can get in there, do a couple good turns with my thumbs. See how instantly that everything's in there in a matter of two or three turns. Wow. We have our awesome meat mixture here. Coals are nice and hot. Yeah. We want them super hot. I want that little bit of char, that burn, Yeah. right? But moist on the center. I'm gonna grab a nice handful, okay? Crunch it up into a ball, smash it down. You wanna overpress your patty out. Okay. Maybe about 25% larger than the size of your bun. Okay. Because it's gonna shrink. Good to know. While these are cooking, let's go back and prep the rest of our items. Sounds good. Let's also make a spread. And in that spread, we're gonna take yogurt and more blue cheese and some pickles. Mix it together, give it a nice tangy but savory element. Which, that sounds awesome. Which I think every burger needs a good spread on it. Right. Right? Of course, the bacon, lettuce, and I managed to get a tomato from that trustee's table over at Shaker Village. Nice work. Yeah, yeah, so this is a Hungarian ox heart tomato. That sounds I think, so cool. I know, right? Let's yep. wrap this up. Perfect. So these burgers are just about finished. How long do you cook them for? In this case, we're gonna do about, oh, five minutes okay. on each side. I think we should hit them with a little extra bourbon. I like it. Huh? I didn't even know that's a thing. Let's get that bourbon flamage going. Ow! Yeah. Give it one last mix. Put a dollop on top of each one, okay. except for the two that you're gonna put the lettuce on. Right, so we're just hitting the right. tops with the sauce. Just hitting the top. Yep. Let's take that red leaf lettuce, place it down on the bottom. It's gonna prevent all those burger juices from making our buns soggy. Yeah. So we have those beautiful ox heart tomatoes. Yeah. Let's go put the burgers down. I can't wait. Melted cheese, nice char. They're medium rare, just how I like them. Let's go ahead and slide that on top. Love it. Look at that. Let's get that bacon. Can't forget the bacon. No. Not if we're making a bourbon bacon bluegrass blue cheese burger with brioche buns. I can't even count that high. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, bud? It's perfect. Oh, man. Yeah, that's the best burger I've had in a long time. That's amazing. That's the best bike ride I've had in a long time. Nice. You did well. <laughs> I appreciate that. This is amazing. <laughs> Here we are, out in the middle of nowhere after a bike ride, enjoying yeah. a five-star burger, you know? Yeah, it's a perfect way to end the day.